Hello and welcome to the Darren Connell podcast show. My name's Darren Connell and this is my podcast. And this week we've got my friend and guest, Chris Forbes. Hello. All right, mate. Sorry that, I mean, I don't, this feels weird sitting here, mate. I've not done one in about a month. I've not done one at all, so it feels even weirder. Well, uh, and it'll be your last one as well. (laughs) No, but it does feel weird. I've just been busy with the comedy festival and gigging and all that kind of shit and court cases as well. Court cases. I've been on the run. (laughs) How did that all go? Went pretty well. Uh, I'm the bad boy of Scottish comedy. (laughs) I've got halfway like, ever since I get done, I've got halfway like 40 babes. 40 babes? Yeah, 40 babes. I wanted to come down to the courthouse and support- outside <laughs> and just be shouting, NOT GUILTY! <laughs> Free the Dardo one! <laughs> but you did alright. Ah, I done alright. I was actually going to ask you for a lift, because I don't drive. And then I was like, but the sun will be down there that day, so you would end up in the paper as well, mate. <sighs> you've, you've already put me in the paper once before, actually. Aye. Unintentionally. How how did that happen? You, you, you told an a interviewer about... Uh, me being in hospital and then all of a sudden I had loads of texts about it as well oh no way I. you wanted to keep that private uh, that was it and I'm running my gub <laughs> I was fucked in the hospital you nearly died um, but remember, I, you want to talk about it remember that day I, I do remember it I, it was uh, it was weird because we were we were filming Scott Squad when it happened yeah and then uh, I became very unwell let's say was rushed into hospital, but the funniest thing about it was I was still in the Scott Squad uniform, so I had the police uniform on. Yeah. And I've never been taken so quickly in a hospital in my life because <laughs> no one knew who I was. Just they just thought I was a policeman, so I was rushed straight through. Scene two, just so nice, everyone was great. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm just an actor, and they were spitting on me. Fault. Like, no. <laughs> Pig. No, they were very good, but it was very funny being a police officer getting shown Aye. into the hospital. Aye. It must uh, that must be a weird thing. That must never really happen. Uh, an actor getting took to Aye, in a costume. straight from set and costume. It was weird. Because he went in the... He was filming Scott Squad and he jumped into the water in a pond and a... What was it? An infection with the water? Aye. I mean, that's... No one really knows. A mysterious illness. Aye. <laughs> Let's just say that. It was like proper... I remember going to visit you though Aye. and thinking, God, you look fucked, mate. I, was... I never said that to you because you were like, I wasn't even on a drip. I was on a bad way, but uh, you came up to see me. That was nice. We hung all the sweeties. That was it. And he, ate, he ate them all <laughs> before he left. <laughs> charged my phone and all. <laughs> can, I, can I use that plug to charge my phone? You're you like, did, ah, did. <laughs> <laughs> You lost a bit to his phone. Uh, it was weird. Because I, I really honestly don't have much recollection of the scene. We were in the middle of filming. Yeah. And I, but afterwards I was like, well, they'll, they'll not be able to use that scene because I left, I'm sure, before we really finished it. But yeah. it, it made it in the show. Did it, it, it must have hit you straight away, though, eh? Aye. Like, as soon as you got into the water, you were... No, because it was, it, was, it was later on. Oh, right. The water, yeah. We'd filmed the water one in the morning, so maybe it was just something that, that happened as a result. Um, Aye, I remember that day. But there you go. And yeah. now we've got similar health problems. Because uh, we've got shit toes. Shit toes, <laughs> aye. He was at the Chiropotist before this as well. The podcast was nearly no going to happen. Because we thought you were going to lose a toe. Puss pockets. Oh, mate, that's fucking bogging, man. Puss pockets. Is that, that for a phrase? Is that your... What's rang? He said puss pockets. It was potential when growing toenail. They'd started and they'd, they'd left a couple of puss pockets. Wow. I'd never heard that. It's pretty horrid, isn't it? Phrase of my life. So was what did they do? Did they clean it up? Aye, she was she was very good. I'd recommend her actually. I was reluctant to go, but she was great. She kind of she went in amongst my toes while we, a wee, a wee blade. It was like a wee Stanley knife. And she just kind of cut it open and woof. That sounds brutal. Sorted it out. So I don't know how you can recommend dinner. me. I've not got any toenails. I've I got my toenails removed That's, and I was you were right off. Aye. Because when I was about the, 12 or something. She said that can happen. Yep. So I was right to come in. In fact, I've told you about that before, Anna. And you never believed this. I get my toenails removed. Now, if you have to sign a, a mad contract <laughs> thing to say that your toenails are not going to grow back. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like a five-page document or something. This sounds like a Bobby storyline. No, I've, you, like I've broke bones and I would say an ingrown toenail is worse. Aye. Like, I've never experienced that pain. It was bad. It was, I, I knew it was sore because even, like, the sheet of my bed over my toe was it was hurting it. 
after the now you've got hobbit feet <laughs> I've got bad toes though because I had an operation I didn't really want to talk about my toes I, I no really, mate we're just talking about this for 50 minutes I really don't I, I don't like feet you're into toes on on you no I hate my own toes like bird's toes but other people's toes are alright but I don't like it if the <laughs> second toe is longer than the big toe Aye. I feel like that is an alien trait like you're from another <laughs> planet but uh, I had an operation on my two middle toes on each foot when I was about 14 mm-hmm they had to cut them open and straighten the tendons out on them because I had mad claw toes. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe I'm telling people this. It's because I keep thinking I'm just talking to you. I know. And uh, I had to get pins inserted in my toes, in two of my toes in each foot, <laughs> until they were straightened out and I, I was in a wheelchair for two months. Fuck off, honestly. Aye. You were and, in a wheelchair? Because uh, I was just in high school and I, I, I didn't even realise how serious that was and it, I wrote a, a personal, you know, you had to write personal experience essays in English, and I wrote right. one about that. I called it a wheelie good experience. <laughs> Fuck off! I feel awful about that now, but I got I got an A. But Is I that had pins. Felt sorry for you. <laughs> it was very odd, very odd experience running about with pins, big big bandages on my feet, and pins sticking out. Fuck man! Aye. Did you get to keep a chair? <laughs> I didn't know. Because sometimes it didn't. Because sometimes when you. Get, you get to keep the crutches if you break your leg. Ah, that's right. Because right, I've got like an old stooky from when I broke my arm. Pure stinking of shite. It, it is stinking. <laughs> and you know, but the reason I kept it, because again, that was when I was quite young. I mm. fell through a shed roof. I had a very accident-prone childhood. What are you doing uh, in top of a shed? I was having a snowball fight, and oh. I thought it would be a good vantage point if I could get on top of this shed. And I'd be like, this is it. But the minute I stood on it, the roof collapsed. I fell through and I, I landed on a... You know, people keep random crap in a shed. Mm-hmm. They had a, a pane glass window just sitting, a spare one. And I smashed a glass window and hit a lawnmower with my head. So I cut my head open <laughs> in four places and broke my arm. But the, the stu- I was really pleased with the stookie because I really fancied a girl at school. Mm. And uh, someone's probably going to know her if I say this, but I'll tell you who it was just for a, a weird reference. But it was uh, Derek Johnson's daughter, Judith, oh, right. Judith Johnson, right? I was besotted with you in school, okay? And uh, I was oh. desperate for her to sign my stookie. <laughs> and I was like, do you want to sign my stookie? She didn't have a pen on her, either did I. But she signed it JJ with her eyeliner. And I was like, that's pretty sexy. That is sexy. I hope she didn't look like your da. <laughs> <laughs> Just Derek Johnson with long hair. <laughs> I, I, I seen, I, I, I did a... Uh, a radio thing with Derek Johnson and I nearly told him that I really had the hots for his daughter and that I've kept an old stookie because it's got JJ on it but Fuck. I didn't so I hope that doesn't get back to him now <laughs> I was going to say something really inappropriate there but I'll just leave it I'll just forget it Aye. so uh, I've, I've had a kind of accident when I was younger with a shed as well a shed it's, I mean it's it's very common I never fell through a shed but you ran into one? Well, I ran into one, but I went in for my pal when my pal was in the end, so I went into his shed because I was bored and I was like rummaging through the shed. And this actually <laughs> happened, right? I'm not lying. There was a ginger bottle full of bleach. Now, the bleach or the disinfectant was, it looked like limeade, like it was green. So I thought it was ginger and I took a sip. I took a fucking sip of it and straight away I was like, ah, right, that's obviously no ginger. Woke up in Stockpile Hospital in a big <laughs> metal bath and a nurse was like scrubbing us with a fucking, uh, like, big bit of metal, kind of, like, what's it called? The kind of Brillo pad things. Oh, right. Like, right. I was getting scrubbed and I had to stay in hospital overnight and all that. So I think that probably explains a lot mentally. It is funny, and you know, when people say, oh, do you just get to come up with your own storylines for Scott Squad? <laughs> and then you come out with stuff like that. Be like, oh, yes. Aye. No, I drank bleach when I was four. You know, I, can, I hear voices in my sleep and that. But apart from that, am I right? <sighs> I had a few weird ones. I fell off the back of a trailer. That was one of my earlier ones. Uh, I was shoveling stones off it. Helped my dad shovel stones off to do some gravel work. Aye. Just as a wee guy, you're excited about helping out. I had a shovel. But I tripped over the back of it and uh, hit the top of my head off the toe bar bit and I split my head open and needed eight stitches there. That's brutal, mate. And then a couple of years later I was standing on a, a swing 
this sounds very random, but I was just standing on the seat of the swing holding the the chains as my mates were rattling the whole frame of it to see how long we could stay on. Yeah. Because you're, you're kids. But the whole frame came apart and then met the top pole just came down and smacked me in the head and I had to go to hospital for that as well. I had more stitches on my head. Uh, then the shed roof thing. I had the, the toes. That was a bad, bad day. Toes are bad, mate. Dislocated my shoulder. Uh, broke my finger. Really? All sorts of weird stuff. Have you not got something happen to your back as well? I've got problems with my back. Uh, Is that just because you're old? Joint. I'm just getting old now. <laughs> you're old as fuck. What age are you? 30. I, don't, I, <laughs> I used to lie about it so often. But I know you no, used to lie. 34. You sure? Yeah, that's it. That's on the passport. ID. Do you know what Officer Karen is like? She's like forty six or something. I I didn't know. I, I know she's she is she looks great. Yeah. Because I I, th- I think most people think she's late twenties. So did I. So uh-huh. she's. I want to know what her her secret is. She's uh, no dead inside, like <laughs> us. <laughs> She'll get older. The more she works with you. Start to show. <laughs> she's pure aged. Is there any questions? Somebody just saying good beard action. Good beard action. Who said good that? Beard. Andrew Kelly, you're putting me to shame in the uh, beard front. Are you jealous? You've got a good, you've got a good shade of beard. Mine goes ginger and grey. Big shout out, eh? John McIntyre. The guy who makes his beard black. He wants a shout out on the show. Well, him and Marco. Was that him that was uh, drinking the bucky? Mm-hmm. Aye. Aye. John sure. McIntyre and Marco. A guy messaged us last night. And he's like, ah, sorry, John, I'm not slagging you, but he's like, da, I'm drinking bucky. <laughs> I want to drink bucky, right? And we just shit and chill at your podcast. And I'm like, all right, you want to buy a ticket to my gig? <laughs> that's two good names, though. John McIntyre and Marco. Mad Marco. That's the, that's the two guys you're sending round to get a job done. Ah, you know Marco. He's Aye, got send, guns in send the loft, doesn't he? Send big John and Marco. Aye, he's got guns. How come you're on the Baromania 3? Who asked that? Dean Watson. Uh, was that on Sunday there? Fuck knows. I don't know why. I think I was just in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brown's asking if you're doing the fringe this year. Oh my fuck. I'm not doing the fringe. <laughs> Big man's doing the fringe, but Chris, you want to give your punt a show? Doing the fringe. <laughs> Gilded Balloon, 7.45. Every night. Come on down. <laughs> Aye. It's amazing. It's good to do one year and then take one off. I think I, I would have done that now in hindsight. It's good to take a break. Uh, well, that was my first fringe. I mean, I've Aye. been around for a long time, but my first full run, and towards the end, I was just in 30 fags a day, thinking, what the fuck am I doing, man? This is... It's not for me. Begging people to buy a ticket on a Wednesday night. I know. It's brutal. I know. Doing a gig to, like, five people. They're all Swedish. <laughs> you had some pretty good stories from last year's one, some audiences. Brutal. I mean, I, do, I don't regret it. I do enjoy it now. Looking back, I'll enjoy it. But at the time, I was just like, what the fuck is happening to my life? We've done worse ones. Tea in the Park's pretty brutal. We both did that. Aye, Tea in the Park. That was, that was carnage, wasn't it? That was pretty tough. Uh, are you talking about the most recent one? Yeah, I mean, they've all been bad, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to Tea in the Park going, let's go and watch some comedy in the tent. Aye. They just they just find a tent that's a bit quieter where Aye, they can dark. really like, start to come down a wee bit mm-hmm. and not freak out. Because I was honest when I was up on stage and I was just looking out to the field and there's like just everybody just lying in kettles like that. <laughs> and people, so uh, how are you doing, guys? Got <laughs> a cunt is in a kettle right in the middle of a yeah. field. That's a funny funny little pose you've got. That's kettle them. pose. <laughs> You've never took. You could do a whole yoga. Never, I've never took either. You what? could do a whole yoga sesh with just different drug poses. <laughs> <laughs> Junkies are like that anyway, and they're kind of <laughs> Bikram yoga and that. Remember, we went to the big. <laughs> oh, we aye, went aye. to Bikram yoga, and I nearly had a heart attack. It's great. I was telling you to go for ages, and then you went, and you thought you were going to die, and now nah. neither of us go. <laughs> it's tough, man. I was just lying starfish. It's the toughest thing you can do, I think. Bikram. Uh, I'm like, I'm not taking my... I think I was the only guy with my T-shirt still on. I'm like, I'm not getting my tits out. <laughs> That's like the equivalent of the fat guy in the pool with the T-shirt on, isn't That's it? That's right, man, yeah. Aye. There's something wrong with my skin I was born with. 
But it's good. But that's what they say, even if you just stay in the room. That's how brutal it is. I know. Don't leave. I was going to ask you something there and I forgot. I lost my train of thought. What, any other questions? Yeah, there's some... I can't really see. Robbie Lee's in a three-year series of Scott Squad, question mark. Um, we don't know. Uh, we've not had an eye, we've not had an awe, have we? No. Andrew Kelly's uh, loved the haircut shot, Chris. Oh, great. <laughs> nice to know someone watched it, actually. That's funny. Thank you very much, Mr Kelly. When your next gig, Don? My next gig, uh, I think I'm doing that charity thing with you and ha- Hamilton next week. Is that next week already? Is that next week? Aye, crikey. So that, and you're getting a compliment with your beard as well. Is that right? Aye, it's a <laughs> great beard action, boys. Oh, I see. It's double. Double stubble. Double stubble, aye. Double stubble, aye. <laughs> <laughs> that's your new fucking sk- sketch name aye so I feel like I need to clear that up with the knuckle duster we just kind of moved on you, you like, moved quite quickly aye, over that that was a prop I bought that for Scott Squad as a prop and I forgot to take it out of my suitcase that's the party line it sounds like that's the way your lawyers coach you to say it aye that was really well rehearsed there the blood in the hair area was part of the prop and all <laughs> and that mean <laughs> But aye, that was that was just so you bought it on a previous trip, is that right? That was a stupid even the judge was like, Yeah, you're a fucking idiot. I mean he never actually said that, but he was just like, Yeah, come on. Aye. But I went to <laughs> I went to Bulgaria two, about two years ago, right? Two years ago, two thousand and fucking fifteen. And I was in Bulgaria and I don't know if anybody's ever been there before, but it's just rows and rows of shops that sell like knuckle dusters and swords and I seen this knuckle duster and I thought right the new series of Scott Squad's coming up I'll buy that as a prop I'll use it for like Officer Karen to say that it's my granda's ring or something run into the station with it and then I just put it in my suitcase came back to Scotland and then about three weeks later I was doing the ICW show at the SEC Remember that night? Uh huh. And we were just fucking steaming that night, weren't we? We ended up wrecked. I ended up breaking my ribs in two <laughs> days. Using the knuckle duster in yourself. <laughs> Aye. So two days after that, I was flying to Berlin for my mate Stag do. And my ribs were fucked. And I never even checked. My, my suitcase for Bulgaria was still there. Still had the stickers on it for Bulgaria across the bag. And it was supposed to be handheld luggage. Mm-hmm. That's why I ended up getting stopped because it was a massive fucking suitcase. Like it was the size of this table, and they were like, "It's handheld luggage." And I was like, "All right, my nut and pain colours with broken ribs." And they just pulled it out, and I was like, "Oh my fucking god, man! How am I going to?" And then I get pulled. Next thing I know, I'm in an interrogation room, and uh, even the police was like, "Ah, you're in Scott Squad." I was talking to the woman, and I was like, "Hi." And that was it. It was just a pure. Did chain. they give you a full search once they found the dusters? No. Did they get? Did they get personal? I'm going to. I mean, I've never. I've never had a criminal record. I've never been in trouble with the police. So I was just like, I'm getting my. They're getting a bit my ass, man. I know it because <laughs> I was in this. It was a weird room. It had a kind of medical vibe about it, and I was Aye. like, right, they're going to tell me to take my trousers off here, man. Hear that snap? Aye. The glove. <laughs> And I was like, ah, oh, man, fuck. I mean, I wasn't even... Uh, I, don't, I don't even know. It was just that pure... And then I'm trying to tell him I broke my ribs. I'm a stand-up comedian. I broke my ribs at the wrestling show at the CC. <laughs> and he's like, You what? probably sounded more mental. I know. Trying to, trying to explain yourself would have sounded more mental. I know. And then... Uh, Do you he, think there's still some folk that, are, that don't believe you that are going... He was taking those dusters to do some damage, man. <laughs> to cause it. <laughs> like a, a football hooligan. Aye, aye. Uh, I think people thought I was mental anyway. But then they just seen that. They were like, aye. no surprise, really. But it all, it all worked out. But it took ages. That was what surprised me. It really takes a long time, doesn't it? Uh, what was that, two years? Two years. Fucking stressful, man. <sighs> 
I was, I was honestly in court and like uh, when they're, re- they're reading it, the kind of charges and what happened. What do and they what do they call that? Like when they're saying what what is it you were actually charged with? Is it like carrying a not a deadly weapon or something like what is it they said? It was like an offensive weapon. And it was like an aviation charge because oh, right. it was in the airport. Oh, right. And I was just like, fuck. So my lawyer was like, I just plead guilty to carrying the weapon and you'll get away with the, the aviation charge. And I was like, right, I'm worried about the aviation charge. I'm not really worried about the weapon part. Because if I got Cause the... Because it must be... The aviation stuff, I guess, is like... Aye. More severe and because of terrorism and stuff. Aye. Pro- that's what he says. He says, I would have been on a, a list... A, fl- a no fly list with like fucking terrorists. That's how a Scottish terrorist would do it, <laughs> wouldn't it? With knuckle dust on a wee gingy bottle. Aye. Square go, mate. <laughs> no, but I was just. And then yeah, I even heard people giggling in the court and stuff. And I was like, oh my god, man. <laughs> it's it probably good that you had that on your side. That maybe people were just like, oh, he's just. A fucking idiot. He's made a mistake here. A wee daft, I felt like an idiot myself. I was like, I can't believe that, man. Because there's no excuse. I mean, it was lying in my case for weeks. What did, did they take them off you straight away? I take it they just confiscated it when they pulled you into the wee room. Aye. The knuckle dusters. And see, before before I went into the room, the police was like, ah, you're in trouble, by the way. This is bad. <laughs> This is bad. And I'm shiting myself out my not in painkillers with broken ribs. Like, what? And he's like, nah, man, this is bad for you. Pure serious. I like to picture cops, though, like how we, in, in the Scots Code, you're having a laugh. Like, they were standing outside the room, two of them going, I'm going to go in and tell this guy. It's really fucking bad. Bobby's a dick. Any <laughs> uh, more questions? Aye, so that's me cleared that up because a lot of people are uh, messaging me and. Uh, Aye. The usual shit. Well, it's good. I mean, they never found the sword, so it's all worked <laughs> out. <laughs> or the gear. <laughs> That's the only reason I was there there. I was taking guns. That went up in the paper, wasn't it? Fuck. I wasn't taking guns. <sighs> They're in my loft. Darn stoke top. <laughs> no, but I, I won't be going back to Bulgaria. Have you ever been? It's pure shite. I went, I, I really liked it, but... <laughs> I was quite drunk, but I went to Sofia in Bulgaria because uh, that was the closest the uh, Scotland fans could get. The Tartan Army, a lot of people flew to Bulgaria to Sofia, and then we had to get a bus from there to Macedonia for the Scotland mm. Macedonia game, and that was great. So it was a brilliant trip. Because you're mad Tartan Army, aren't you? I do like going to the Scotland games. He goes to the Scotland games, Aye. and that was a that was a good trip. Poor guy. <laughs> no one goes for the football Aye. so it's, it's always good regardless of the result and you're a Aberdeen fan as well aren't you yes for my sins yep. well you are doing alright we've done well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's the end of the football chat <laughs> he put what did you put on as a bet at the start I'm gonna, I need to sl- oh. I need to call him out on his bet we were driving him for a gig and he's like uh, aye Brendan Rogers is not that good <laughs> Right before the season started. Brendan Rogers is not that good. Uh, I'm going to do Rangers to win the league. Aberdeen second. Wouldn't it? I was it's looking Celtic for good... Or something. I was looking for good odds. <laughs> <laughs> How did that come back and bite you in the arse, mate? Quite badly, but, you know, Leicester had just won the Premier League and I thought, I was looking for something outrageous and I thought, Aye. imagine Rangers just came up and won it. You know. But secretly I did think Celtic would probably... Full of shit. <laughs> How much did you bet on that? Not lots, not lots. I've lost, I've lost more on, on more bets. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not a Celtic fan, by the way. I'm just slagging. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm not a Celtic fan. Uh, what else do I talk about? I don't know, man. It's your your podcast. I what, know. What, what's I feel a bit rusty, actually. Mm-hmm. What? Somebody saying you probably should visit the countryside in Scots Squad. That sounds Aye. a bit rapey, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Aye, that would be C- funny if you come turned up, up to the countryside. If you turned up in the countryside, film him. <laughs> film in the countryside. My dad owns a boffy. It'd be dead funny. I think they maybe just meant that way you could do a scene with me and Ash. No, mate, he wants to pump me in a. <laughs> somebody wants to pump me in a farm. He did see it in Scotch, bro. Oh, did he? <laughs> Alright, sorry, mate. <laughs> sorry, I've had previous. You know what I mean? Mm. But aye, we'll have to think of something. I don't know, we'd have to think of something Bobby would be doing out in the countryside. 
burning his <laughs> knuckle dusters, <laughs> burning evidence. I'm not going to have that done on my... Well, that, that's if it comes back. Mm. It'd be good. I mean, that needs to be in the new one. The knuckle duster stuff. I'd right. love to go out in the countryside with you. It's good. In Ashley, <laughs> in Scotswood. <laughs> it's good fun in the countryside, actually. Right. I feel like we get good gear. We get to drive the big Jeep and all that. Good gear? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of innuendos in there. Mm. Uh, any more questions? I can't see anything else. <laughs> How long have we been doing this for? It's just like when you're doing a set and you go, uh, how, how long have I been doing? I know. I'm dying in my ass. No, this is good. Aye. I'm enjoying it. We were going to go to the cinema the night to watch Kong. So Kong, man. This yeah, is better yeah. than that. I've sourced it. It's still on some places, so we can maybe still go and see Kong. We can go after this. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in seeing Kong on the television. That's what I was thinking. You've got to see that in the cinema. I've heard it's shite, by the way. It's all right. It's okay. Oh, have you seen it? Aye. No, no. I just it's all right if it's shite. It's just you, you, you got to see a massive, a massive uh, creature. There's dogs next door, isn't there? So it's, it's freaking me out. Do we write our own stuff for Scott Squad, Stuart? Well, Stuart, if you're a fan, you should know that it's improv. <laughs> so we don't write our own stuff. But I mean, there's a concept there, isn't there? And then we kind of wing it. Aye. Like this podcast. No. I think everyone's a wee bit different. Every every different pairing, because um, they do invite us to uh, put forward our own storylines, but then they'll refine them. But for the most part, there's two two storyline supervisors, Joe, that you had on the podcast, and Chris Grady. Yeah. Uh, and it will be up to sometimes just a paragraph, or sometimes a full page describing what's going to happen in the scene. But there's very there's very little or, or, or sometimes no actual dialogue, so then we just have to improv around what the, the yeah. story is. How do you feel with that? Because like he's you're a proper trained actor. Aye, aye. Went to drama school and stuff. That's so it. is that a bit weird? No, not not in the slightest. It's better because I do very little acting, but I've done stand up for ten years, so yeah. it, that's why it suits stand up. Uh, the show and they get a lot of stand-up guests coming on to play the guest roles because it's always people that are really quick and easy to uh, improv and adapt yeah so i it's great fun it's it's probably the reason it's the most fun is because you get to say something different every time uh it's a good laugh and i really hope it does come back i mean obviously as a a desperate out of work actor <laughs> as much as it being a good laugh you're kind of looking at an empty diary like please man Please come back, I'm fucked. <laughs> Bobby on work experience in Scott Squad. Oh, aye. In the country. That's just getting a bit saved by the bell, kind of. When Screech becomes a headmaster, Bobby would be like, the colonel. The colonel? <laughs> Fucking KFC. I can't multitask, I can't talk and read comments. Bobby gets community service for the knuckle duster and has oh, to help out in the country. That's quite hey! good. Who's that? Get them employed. Paul. <laughs> that's a good idea, Paul. Sign them up. Paul. Have you ever had the jail? Not at the jail. I've had close close uh, run-ins. I've been detained once. I was the lead suspect in a break and entry. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, a, it was a huge misunderstanding. But uh, I was in... Uh, there's a golf course near to where I stay. Yeah. And when you're younger, you know, like a park or a cycle track. But for us, it was the golf course you go and drink on. So we'd went up in the golf course to drink quite, quite heavily. We'd just bottles of wine that we'd all taken from our parents' cabinets. And uh, Chateau Neuf de Pape. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were steaming, steaming drunk. There was about six of us. And I don't know why, and this will sound very weird, but when you're drunk, you'd think of funny ideas. I thought it'd be funny to start hiding. <laughs> Hiding on my mates and then like jumping out, scaring them. Cause it was like two in the morning, but I fell down a hill that was on the golf course, like quite a steep hill. It ended up in a bunker, and my shoe had come off and everything. I had a bottle of wine, and my mates didn't know where I'd gone because I was hiding. But I just I didn't get to do the jumping out part. And then the next thing I knew, it was two torches in my face, and they were like, "Right, that shoot, we've got. Don't move, don't move, put that down." Thinking I had that weapon or something, but it was <laughs> a bottle of wine. And they tipped out and they, they didn't even tell me what was going on because they just assumed they'd got their man. 
and they started frog marching me up to the van. I was going, "What? What's what's going on?" I was, I'm sorry, we're we're just drinking, and I just thought I was getting into really serious trouble for drinking a carry out in the golf course. And then they were saying that you know what you've done. The house has been broken into up here in such and such road. He says you're 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 coming down to the station, and I was like, "Whoa!" Like realizing I was in way over my head. I was uh, like, "I'm just I'm just with my mates. We're just having a drink in the golf course. I don't know anything about any breaking entry." And they said, "If you're actually with people, then shout them because there's no one else here because they'd moved on and I'd been hiding. So they thought I was making it up." <laughs> and I was like, I, "Honestly, I promise, I promise, officer. I said I'm just with my friends." <laughs> and he was like, "We'll shout them to snow." And I was like so nervous and I was like John my mate John Coyle if he's watching this and Neil Monroe he was another one I was like John Neil and there was a wee pause and then my pal John just went Chris from miles away you funny <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't believe that they were my pals though uh, so they put me in the van and they drove me around for about an hour until we found my actual mates wow man and then uh, even then they kept me in the back and they went out and questioned them and said was there someone else with you earlier on and I could hear them just outside the van. And they were like, uh, no, no. Thinking they were getting someone into trouble. And they were like, uh, was there a tall guy with you? Like, quite a tall guy. And they were like, uh, I, I mate James, but he went home He went home hours ago. And I was like, oh, God. Like, they didn't realise I needed them to say, aye, Chris, he's our pal. But they eventually they figured it out. And then they just confiscated my mates. He had a bottle opener. He had a corkscrew. He's a really posh man. He had a corkscrew and he, he confiscated that because uh, he said it was a killing weapon. He actually held it up in front of wee Calm's face and he went, do you know what this is? And Calm went, it, it's a corkscrew. <laughs> and he went, no, it's a killing weapon. A killing weapon. I think that was their way of being like, I can't believe we've just wasted an hour on this idiot and his friends rather than actually tracking down Aye. a guy that had just broken into a big house. He's probably away counting his, the money and all uh, that and... It was pretty surreal. That must have been a hangover for hell, eh? Aye, it was pretty bad. What age were you? Uh, it was before I went to the States, so I was 14 or 15. <sighs> Breaking the law. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Disappointed, mate. Peer pressure. Peer pressure. <laughs> uh, I can't think of anything else to say. I keep losing my train of thought. I feel like the rain man. Yeah. Let's go to the casino. Aye. <laughs> Just uh, stare at the carpets for five hours. <laughs> uh, any other questions? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> That's us fucked then, isn't it? <laughs> Anything else you want to talk about? <sighs> we can't wrap it up now. How long has that been? 35 minutes. God, man, I'm all rusty, by the way. That's been a while. Don't worry, trips, I'll be back in it. <laughs> you have to start doing research and having mad questions and like really awkward, controversial big points. Putting people Accusing you, shit. Aye, I'm glad you're not doing it tonight, but for the next person, <laughs> you should have like, a big list of things. Like, is it true in 2011? <laughs> no, well, normally I like to leave it open to improv and no- normally the guests are better. <laughs> So. Is that why you keep saying I can't think of anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, don't please. <laughs> I but Chris is a proper trained actor. You were in How Did I Get Up There as well, weren't you? Aye, yep. So with wee James Kirk, who's in Scott Squad as well. Ken we, Beatty, the wee ginger guy. Ginger hair. He's lost like ten stone. Aye, he's going. He's doing very well. We did a wee sketch group, and that was great. Great fun. Where is he just now in South Africa? He's in uh, South Africa. Is yeah. he filming? He's filming. Is it top secret? Top secret oh, stuff. Yeah, fuck. Right, sorry. But he's doing very well. Aye. Aye. No like us. <laughs> Praying for Scott Squad to come back and he's in like Hollywood <laughs> films and all that probably. Uh, when's your next gig? I'm in uh, St Andrews on Saturday. I'm doing my first... Uh, I'm doing a... It's the last time I'm doing my full show from last year's Edinburgh Fringe, Tall Needy Mutant. So, if by chance there's anyone in the <laughs> St Andrews or surrounding area watching this, feel free to come down to the Bayer Theatre. Good. You're looking forward to it. Ah, um, I really, I really enjoyed the show. So it's uh, it'll be nice to do it one last time and then concentrate on a new one. I can't believe uh, 
how quick it's came back. Like how fast is it? Even the comedy festival's just finished. Yeah, like, fucking hell, man. Ah, it's quick. The, the Edinburgh Fringe is a, it's a real beast. It's a monster. Ah, but um, two months after you've finished it, you're already talking about Aye. filling in your forms and applications and everything for the next year. So it's many times have you done the Fringe? I've done it. I think five times in different different guises. I did a I did it one year as Damien Crow as a as the goth act. I do. Yep. Um, I did it with How Do I Get Up There, the sketch group with Wee James. I did it with a guy, Cami Sinclair, who's a very funny clown. We did <laughs> a we did a kid show, Chris and Cami, the uh, the Blunder Games. <laughs> uh, I remember that. Terrible. And uh, I've done it a couple of other times. Then just uh, <laughs> randomly. <laughs> How long have you been? Uh, that's what I was going to bring up. Is it alright to talk about you being an ordained minister? Oh, aye, aye, yeah. yeah. Drum up some business. <laughs> <laughs> He's an actual on, ordained minister, I for did. real. Aye. I but just got ordained this year. Right? Did you? It was the start of this year. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, it was the start of last year. I got ordained and I did a, I did my mate's wedding in America. And now I've got a couple other weddings this year. That's good, man. It's good fun. What was that? Remember I said something quite funny? Like he was oh, telling me. I told me. you all about being ordained. Aye, aye. I talked you through the whole wedding. <laughs> at, like at the start of a car journey. Aye, it, this he told us how he get trained, where he get trained, and how he done it. And then about an hour it? later. Aye. Or something like. Mark, someone else in the car was like, "Aye, so because you're an ordained minister," and you went, "What? You're an ordained minister?" <laughs> it was awful. You've got a, you've got a really bad short term memory though. I have got it right. Aye. It's really bad. As you can tell with me, I can't even think of anything to say. I think it's because I drank that bleach in the shed when <laughs> yeah, I was a wee I, guy. I didn't know that one about you, so that's explained a lot. <laughs> Aye, that that really is. Is. It makes you more understanding the next time you're annoyed at me for forgetting stuff. I'll be like, oh, don't be too hard on him, he, he drank bleach. <laughs> <laughs> he drank bleach voluntarily. <laughs> Aye. He tasted bummy. <laughs> Aye, so that, I think that's Aye. pretty funny how you're a on dead. Nice. Aye, it was good. It was fu- it was good fun doing it in America because yeah. it was even more laid back, and they they just re- they really eat up the Scottish thing. So we had the quake out, we filled it with whiskey and all that, and they were doing like the tying of the knot. They wanted tartan and all this. Yeah, and it was a, an outdoor wedding, and my mate's pretty. He's a pretty liberal, laid back kind of bordering on redneck type of guy. So it was kind of like I love getting to say, by the power invested in me by the state of Oregon. <laughs> I now pronounce you man and wife, and they're like, hey, oh, all right. <laughs> it's great. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, see, when you're ordained, so do you do things like christenings and stuff? And- I'm allowed to do, this is great actually, I'm allowed to do christenings, funerals, and bap. No, I'm allowed to do christenings and uh, baptisms. I'm not allowed to do funerals or, and it states this very explicitly. Exorcisms. Exorcisms. <laughs> Fuck. That is off, off the, uh, off my radar. Why? Not qualified enough. Apparently, that's just the Catholic Church. Oh, aye. And if people or your, your kind of dodgy people that you phone up and say, "Can you get this ghost out of my house?" Aye, homers. Aye, uh, yeah. But uh, apparently, that was that was uh, above my pay grade as a online ordained minister. Fuck man. So that is actually like avoid it. Aye. I wonder. If... I mean, I'll give it a bash. If someone has a problem, Aye. I'll come in. Uh, like a haunted shed. I'll give it a go. You know, <laughs> I'm staying away from sheds, man. Would you do a Ouija board? I don't. I don't think I would actually. Because that's this has been quite a common thing in the mm. podcast. People saying that they might do it. Aye. No, I don't think I would. Just in case. Just in case. Although Eleanor, my fiance Eleanor, she she's got really good points about. Anytime we've ever talked about ghosts and like, do you believe in ghosts and spirits? She had a great point actually, because it was one of those dodgy kind of ghost hunter programs on the telly. But they were, they were talking about these ghosts that had been in a, people that had been in a prison. So it was prisoners that had died, and their ghosts had stayed around the prison. And she was like, the first thing I would do if I died, if I'd been in prison all my life, is fucking leave the prison. Aye, <laughs> so that was a really good point. Like they always say, people would hang around. You'd, you'd leave. You'd go well, somewhere else. Uh, aye, just to the beach or something. <laughs> go for a swim. Like I was in prison for life and now I'm dead. I'm just going to hang about. Uh, and, no. Oh, 
you'd, you'd be off. There's not like that many boozers that's haunted. I'll <laughs> <laughs> <Alky> keep ghosts. <laughs> well, that's true. The bulging, he will was right into ghosts and UFOs and all that. I I really like UFOs. I love space, man. I love Aye. I love exploring space, the possibility of life further did, afield. Did you tell that st- see when we done the podcast last time with Joe? Did he tell the story about when he was on the bike? Oh, fuck off! I'm not telling you. <laughs> was that on the podcast? He told that though. I think it oh, was it? Oh, yeah, bastard! We can't so, get you to do that again. No. We'll tell you after. You've seen right. UFOs before, huh? You have. UFOs. Aye. Oh, aye. <laughs> have you? Huh? Many. Three. About three. You say that so convincingly. Honestly. Recently. Yeah. I don't know if people are aware of what's happening here, but this is great that we have a witness. Three UFO sightings. Did you see a UFO as well, Andy? No. So you I were... was out the back, and my sister's boyfriend was out there. And I was like, oh, that fucking thing, man, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> then the next minute, me and Mark, <laughs> me and him and Mark, oh, at the same time, then we shouted at me, Mark, I fucking, we just seen it there, man, swear to God. Me and my fucking sister's boyfriend. He's seen it? Aye, two years were watching it, and then I just went, a big man fucking flash of light. The two years went like, same time. And what about the first time you seen one? That was at an orange bar. <laughs> <laughs> an orange bar. <laughs> Close to golfing. And what about the second one? That was an orange bar, no? <laughs> <laughs> fucking, that can't help what you were following me. I think he's following you. Right, come on, you need to tell us. You can't just say you had a dream and then no, you need to tell us. Can no, folk hear him? I hope people can hear this. Right, it's great. This voice, man, surely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as you remember this fucking... Must be hearing that, Frank, surely. He's just doing <laughs> <just, he's> <laughs> my talk with him. I just didn't, man. I fucking remember it was if I had it the, the, the day, you know what I mean? Uh, just fucking on the telly, you know, that UFOs are landing, and well, here we go. <laughs> so as I've looked out my front windy, this fucking one's just landed right out my front windy, and wow, well, fuck, here we go. <laughs> Next minute, I've died, I've died behind the couch. So as I'm hiding behind the couch, I hear my door getting booted in, and wow, well, for fuck's sake, man. So as, but the next minute I'm under a table for some, some reason. And then I seen this fucking mad green horn came out. And he goes, ah, it's okay, we're American. <laughs> they grabbed my horn and I woke up. There was a fucking alien, it was American. Just broke into my house for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh. that's, that's what I did, fucking dreams you have, you know what I mean? Been <laughs> <laughs> too deep in it, man. Too deep? <laughs> I like it. It's, Was this after it's you quite, a, quite a politically relevant dream as well. <laughs> Painting the Americans as the alien. I like that. Oh, that was amazing. TV. Wow. That's. You don't talk about Kennedy. No in camera. That's him being genuine enough. Uh, I love a good GFK conspiracy. Yeah. I just stopped watching them actually. Cause just I saw you shared, you shared something the other day where you were like, check this one out. Three hours and 20 minutes. Do you, do you I called it with the fucking Samsungs, no? Did you see that WikiLeaks t- bring out? They're watching every cunt. <laughs> Even when your telly's off, they're watching you. Do you not see that? No. WikiLeaks released it about three weeks ago. So did that. All the Samsungs are fucking listening to you a lot. Are they? What kind of phone you got? iPhone? Oof. So I'm saying they're all detonators, man. Detonators? <laughs> I don't see what they would be watching me for, I'd be just fucking... That's what I'm saying, it's just you say something dodgy and then boom. You're going black at your door. <laughs> <laughs> You've said plenty of dodgy stuff even just tonight, so... That'll be it. Well, I don't know. They might take me in and, like, use this as, like, animal treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any weird dreams lately? Uh no, but I've had like night terrors and stuff. You night ever had terrors. that? Eleanor says I get them. I never remember them, but she says I scare her because I wake up 
in the middle of the night with kind of <laughs> and then I'm I'm like just go to sleep and she's woken up like that. What? And I'm just like I never remember. But Not, I'm just screaming no screaming no <laughs> But no. Oh, I've never had any alien dreams or anything like no. that. I did I actually did uh, much to my mate's amusement. I did two years of exploring the cosmos at uni. As a course, eh? As a course. Because you I needed to take extra credit courses because I was failing the real course I was on so badly. And I did exploring the cosmos. It was great. I loved it. So what was the certificate after that when that was just like a module, so oh, it didn't yeah. count towards an actual thing. Mm-hmm. I was doing that while I was doing sports science and physiology, but I was I was doing so badly at that, I was getting right into the moon, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love all that stuff and all, man. Uh, I, you should watch that JFK thing I tweeted, mate. I will. I mean, it's called J- From J- JFK to 9-11, The Rich Man's Trick. Right. All the JFK stuff is amazing, and then towards the end, you're like, oh, the nine eleven stuff, you're like, shut the fuck up. Aye, people, it's a bit much. I, I, I find that one a bit much, people doing the conspiracies for nine eleven. Yeah. I feel like, I like, find that one harder to believe. Any of the jet ones fuel heard. cannot burn uh, steel beams. <laughs> <laughs> the, pe- the, the plane that was supposed to do the Pentagon, that's the only one that... that Raises my interest though. Is it like the fucking they secured building in the world so we get one stinking camera outside it? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll crack your fucking whip. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to get well in the case, man. Aye. Uh, hey. <laughs> you should be in the men in black wall. I'm telling you what, man, I'd be some private eye, I'm telling you. <laughs> so I would. <laughs> I believe in all that, man. I'm really into it. So I'm a- there's definitely conspiracies. There's definitely stuff going on all the time that we don't know about. Yeah. For sure. Do you think Marlon Manson... Uh, Marlon Manson. <laughs> Marlon... <laughs> Marlon Monroe. Uh, do you think she was killed by the government? I don't believe that one. No. no. I don't. Do you believe that well? <laughs> Aye. Shafting Kennedy. <laughs> she was done. Put a poison into her champagne. So it was. How do you know this? Fact. <laughs> Fair does. You can't yeah. argue with fact. Yeah, she'd be shagging the president, wouldn't she? Can't wait that great. Next minute, take a gun your champagne. See you later, then. See you later. Look at the same phones running about there, they've been a... Well, I thought they'd be going off left, right and centre. <laughs> well, we definitely get done in. Did you watch that? There was a series about the, the Kennedy one. It was... What... You'll know then. What was the date he was assassinated? It's like, is oh, it? Fuck. It's like twenty two eleven sixty three. Wh- whatever the date was, that's the name of the TV show. Oh, aye. And it's about a guy traveling back in time to prevent oh, the assassination. The Stephen King one. Aye, based on his book. Aye. It was James Franco in it. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Because they did have a lot of the actual stuff, the facts about what was going on at the time that he was going back to to look at. Uh, aye, that's definitely fraught with. Uh, what is it? What's the one? The corduroy woman or something like that? The corduroy what woman? What is this? The corduroy woman. There's a woman standing there with a camera as she goes by, as it goes by, and when the gunshot goes off, she doesn't move. Ah, I've mm. seen something like that. That's why you should watch that thing I was telling you about. It's uh, pretty disturbing, actually. Well, there's, there'll be ten times worse things going on just all the time, isn't there? Governments ah, really? and the movements. All the all the all the secretive organisations behind American politics in particular, terrifying. Uh, like skull and bones and all oh, that. Oh, terrifying stuff. We wound up getting found in an oil drum, mate, after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we like uh, eyes yeah. wide shut gowns wrapped on on that. Then your tires will be slashed. Aye. <laughs> 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 podcast just cuts it. We'll have to we'll have to uncover just a wee local conspiracy. They really rattle people. Aye. Something that they wear like bottle banks. Aye. Find out someone just made it, like created their own pothole so they could claim it. Tie it off the council. They're like, oh no! Compo claims. <laughs> Any other questions, Andy? Uh, Paul saying get him that's behind the camera on the podcast. 
Oh, you got to, man. Aye. And Stuart's been getting a bit deep here. <laughs> With the old <laughs> conspiracy stuff. Aye, well, we'll need to make you up next week. There you get something happening now. <laughs> blur, blur his face out in case he says something that sparks the government off. This isn't my real voice either. This is one of the muff voices. Aye. <laughs> that's a, that's a bump. The cunt in the shadow at the back. That's a great name for a documentary. The, the cunt, cunt in the shadow. shadow. <laughs> cunt in the shadow. <laughs> Netflix original. Yeah. That sounds like a good conspiracy doc. Aye, uh, Netflix. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's us. Yeah, it's 50 minutes. 50 minutes? Yeah. 50 minutes is already, isn't it? I'm following your lead, man. You're, I'm pretty podcast. happy. I'm happy between 30 to 60 minutes. I'm cool with that. I think that's cool. <laughs> I mean, we've opened that in our worms with the conspiracy stuff. I need to stop talking <laughs> about that. It's a total obsession, man. 30 to 60 minutes is good. You were uh, worried about getting 30 or 60 years for a, a knuckle dust, so you... Imagine if I go to jail for that. I'd have loved it. I, I'd have kind of liked it as well, to be honest. I just because just it would have been so ridiculous. Anything for material. I'd have come down, down to visit you, the phone and the screen. Like Midnight Express, you getting your nipple out. <laughs> Please, touch me. Ah, 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 ah. He died of AIDS in real life. I know, it was just a random thing. <laughs> Screamed into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. Have you seen that? A fucking f- brutal, that film, by the way. Great film. Great film, though. Aye, brutal. Aye. Good. Lots of good shagging scenes in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was kidding on, there's no. Brutal, horrible shagging scenes, if anything. <sighs> that's something that's just lacking. From Scottish Code, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the countryside scene, me and you. You take Bobby up and pump him. <laughs> we're both going to be dropped from the show now. Aye, we're dropped, aye. I've already got a rep anyway. Bobby. Bobby up the back. Everything's sounding very unusual. It does sound weird, doesn't it? Um, but aye, maybe we'll look into that. We'll explore that option. Get Bob in the countryside for sure for some sort of sordid storyline. Uh-huh. That'd be good. Oh, no. So oh. that's what you bought the knuckle dust off for. But a fisting. It's hard, yeah. Hard to know where to go after that. <laughs> I know it's been. You get anything else to add, Will? No. You just kind of. Fucked it there with the fisting comment. <laughs> Do you, would you like to say anything else? It, no, mate. Listen, whatever you like. If you want to chat about anything else, then let's do it. But if you if you if you feel like we've, you've done your time, so to speak, Hi, my then time. Uh, <laughs> then feel free. Knuckle sandwich. Very, very childish. <laughs> That's what you've called yourself on Twitter. I know. But... <laughs> Honestly, birds have loved it, mate. Aye. Birds love a guy that commits crime. That's what they always said, didn't they? They like, they like, like bad a, boys. I've always been the bad boy, a kind of Scottish comedy, but no. <laughs> it's like really... You know what I mean? Knuckle dusters put you up a little. Because I'm mental. And I'm like, come on. I'm I, Like, it's nice having birds like always talking to you and that, but... It's a burden. Aye. And that's not the reason why I want to do stand-up. It's to make people laugh. It's no for the birds. I mean, I'm not good at being. Uh, I've tried to be like bad. Tried really? to be mean. I just don't have it in my bones. <laughs> You're too nice. I'm not good at it. Even swearing, I, I don't pull it off very well. You don't and, really uh, swear that much. I know it's because it's. I'm awful at it. Yeah. It just sounds very. I'm too middle class. It just sounds ridiculous. Yes. I know because that the golfy story about you drinking wine. Yeah. We stole it from our mother's wine cupboard. <laughs> well, if you want to say it like that. It was a you? nice no. aged seven years. Had a good fruity tang to it. <laughs> Aye. you got to swipe something. That was the best thing. <laughs> you should be drinking fucking glue, mate. That's well, what I don't in the golf. Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> you had real problems. That's what I used to do in the golf age. Just used to <laughs> run through the swamp, put my nut in bucket. Where, where uh, were you on the? Were you at, in terms of the? Because there was the kind of Buckfast Merry Down divide in terms of the when you were younger. And that was the big divide. 
So you were always, you were a buck fast man. I buck fast because I'm not as old as you. I don't know what Mary Down is. So. Is that right? Yeah. Because I was I was I'm sorry. I was lean towards the cider. Buck fast, uh, hooch, hooch, uh, snake bite. I've had a couple of snake bites. My we brother, went... he was a mad dog, twenty twenty guy. Oh really? His nickname was Dog. And it still is for, for a long time. <laughs> your, your brother's dead nice, or not? You ever had a snake bite? I did have a snake bite once, I What's the mix of again? It's a... Oh, fuck. Beer cider? Aye, beer and cider, cider but Aye. see when you're going and... We went camping once and it's like, Bucky... I think people were flicking fucking doubts in it and all that. It fucking... <laughs> Bucky, cider, vodka, anything was getting put in it. And I took a sip and you just wake up the next day, face down in a field, like... It's tough, man. Just camping, just camping. Eh? I woke up in a dog kennel. Remember that? <laughs> that was awful. Like literally waking up in a dog house. Did you? Aye. You need to tell us. Is this the one you were out in the? Ah, I was on a, a balcony. So I got locked out in someone's balcony. <laughs> we were steaming drunk, and we were. It was about I don't know, fifteen, sixteen floors up, and the guy, the guy's place it was. It's, you can go downstairs. So I was. He'd went. He was steaming drunk and he'd fallen asleep on the couch and I'd went outside on the balcony to make a phone call and when I when I, when I came back the door was locked to the veranda <laughs> it's the middle of winter it was freezing but he'd woken up having fallen asleep and thought I'd left so he just disappeared went downstairs went to bed and I was trapped about 10 minutes later my phone died I was in a t-shirt it was freezing the annoying thing was there was a wee dog flap on the on the screen door so dogs were coming in and out and they kept just jumping up on the couch. I was supposed to be sleeping on that night, looking at me going, ah. and I was trying to do the thing, like getting my arm right in the dog flap to get the key. I couldn't reach it. I was tempted to try jumping over to the next balcony. Thank God you never done that, mate. I know. I was screaming at the top of my voice for the guy, Nick, to let me in. No one came to my rescue. I was freezing. I was I was really worried. I was so cold that high up in the middle of winter. And then I noticed that there was the dog kennel for the dogs outside. <laughs> and it's not, it's not like he owned an Alsatian. He's got these wee kind of Maltese things. So it's a wee kennel. And I just got my six foot two frame in there. Just crawled right in under a horrible, stinking, fluffy blanket. Oh, mate. I slept there. And then it was his, his wife found me on the balcony the next day. Just <laughs> had no idea what was happening. Brutal. Brutal. <laughs> the dogs are on the couch and you're oh, in the kennel. Aye. It was very, very bizarre. Did the dogs not come out? Like They kept coming out, looking at me, and then just running back in. No, they were delighted in the couch, in the warmth. Wow, mate. Aye. So you actually slept in a dog kennel Aye. overnight, mm-hmm. and his wife found you in it the next day? I'd, I'd woken up, so I was. Uh, it was actually scarier for her, because when she came upstairs, I was just standing looking in, <laughs> like desperately waiting for someone to let me in. So she kind of had a wee... She kind of jumped back, and she was like, what... What's going on? I was like, woof, n- woof. N- Nick clocked me out. <laughs> She's like, You've been out there all night? I was like, Aye, I, I slept in the kennel, so. Rough. <laughs> Very <laughs> rough. You became one of the dogs. <laughs> I was, there was nothing more depressing than the dogs looking at me from inside when I was trying to get through the flap to get the key of the door. And your fingers just touching the oh, key. Was, You're just touching it, but it's not good enough to get there. Honestly, brutal. Brutal. I just fucking booty the door. Aye. <laughs> 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 It's one of the ones I think I'd have. I'd have took the door right off the hinges, mate. You couldn't, honestly. This was heavy duty. I was 16 up, that's like a jail door, probably. Oh, it's horrible. That must have been a hangover for hell, eh? It was bad. It was yeah, bad. It was up there. stinking a dug shite as well. It was up there. I've, there's been worse ones, but that was up there. Yeah, anyhow, that mental story, that is the mad, Aye. maddest one I've it's heard. Terrible one. Terrible ones from Scotland trips as well, actually. That sounds terrible. like But I'm like, then I'm like, no, no. Right, that's what I did, mate. You seem shell-shocked when you said that. I did, though, uh, because I wrote, aye, aye, that's fine. Because they involve other people and I don't want to right, that's get anyone else. Well, I think that's over 50 minutes anyway, so we better wrap up, because that was short and sweet. Uh, you can tell us that this, the Tartan Terry Army stories next, after. Aye. But thanks a lot, everybody, for listening. Sorry that I've been away for a couple of weeks, just been busy. And thank you to Chris for being the guest. Thanks for having me. That's appreciated, mate. And uh, if you have liked it, just a, a retweet or a wee share on the Facebook would be appreciated. Tune in next week for one new guest, and I'll announce that tomorrow. Thank you. See you later.